friends. Here I am, a couple minutes late, just as I went to put my phone up into the uh, apparatus that holds my phone for these Facebook Lives. I knocked over my bins that have all of everything all sorted. I, I knocked over one of them. And the only thing that I have left to do is to put all of this back together, but everything went all over the floor. So, whew, life is real. Here I am. I am Tia Woodward, and I am Stamp with Tia. And the rest of this time should go much more less dramatic than it started out. I'm just, I keep looking down because I'm rolling up about six yards of ribbon that when it hit the ground, it just rolled away, unrolling as it went. And it's a ribbon I'm using today. So getting, there we go. It's all wound back up. Whew. All right. Set that back in the right bin. I've got two projects for you today. Hello, Andy. Nice to see you. Okay, my friends, let's see, what can I start with? Uh, first of all, I want to start by telling you that I had a private party on Saturday. It was a huge success, huge success. And I want to tell you about that because I want to make sure that you understand that that's um, a possibility. If you want to earn free stampin' product, um, host a party. And we can get you set up and you invite your friends and we do some crafting and then based on how much your friends order it will depend on how many reward points you have for placing an order and um, I'm going to show you the thank you or not the thank you I'm going to show you the projects that we worked on real quick so for instance oh boy okay I'll show you when the camera goes down but anyway just to explain it to you a little bit. I sent kits out, so we did this by Zoom. The hostess was in Oklahoma, the rest of the guests were all in Oregon. I live in Washington. <clears throat> Excuse my voice, I had a medical procedure on Friday and um, it roughed up my voice and it hasn't recovered yet. So they, they intubated me and when it came out, I've, been, I've sounded like this ever since. Anyway, uh, I sent three kits. Some of them um, were just die cut, some of them were just strip cut, and we made each kit together, and people got to ask questions. Um, at the end, we actually, I took demonstration requests on demand, and I demonstrated per their request, and there were like six different things that they wanted to see. Some at heat embossing, I showed masks, I used daubers, I used blending brushes, I used, um, I even used the gold foil. I, I did some color heat embossing. I'm looking at the stuff here. I did all kinds of stuff. <coughs> and that was what they wanted to know. So that was really cool. It was really exciting and it was really good energy. And it's, what's so fun about it is you might invite some friends that you don't even know like to craft or maybe they don't know they like to craft. And you might start a whole new community of um, some friendship um, interactions that are pretty awesome. And I'm gonna tell you, that's why I do what I do. I absolutely love crafting with other people and I absolutely adore showing them new things. I learn, I love, one of the things I love about Stampin' Up! is they're constantly coming out with new products. And it's not just like a new print on paper, there's like new embossing folders, or there's new ways to use the embossing folders, or there's, um, gosh, there's just so many little techniques, and I love learning all of that. And then I love applying it and turning it around and sharing it with you. So if you are at all interested in having a party, I really hope, and you don't already have a demonstrator, of course, I really hope that you'll approach me and we can set up, hi, Barb, um, and we can set up a party for you so that you can earn some free products. So in the case of this last, and it, you know, every party is completely different. Um, in the case of this last party, um, this person hit the hostess, they've already got $600 in sales. Um, 
So that's earning her the, what's the maximum? I want to say it's 16%. 16% in um, Stampin' Rewards. So 16% of the 600 is what she has to get in free product. It also earns her one free 150% uh, off item. And then because it's celebration, she also, hi Andy, yay! You and I need to talk later. Um, I mean, you, we can certainly chat during this as well, but I meant you and I need to have a conversation and I haven't forgotten. As you can tell, my voice is still roughed up. Um, in celebration, when you host a party, if your party's over $300 and hers is, she is also gonna get this free calming camellia stamp set. So she's already getting a ton of stuff. And then like she herself is placing a $160 order. So then that gets her two or three other items for free out of the celebration. I mean, like this hostess is racking it up. So during celebration is a really good time to have a party if you wanna have one. Um, let me know and I would be glad to set you up and we can custom do it. So for instance, when if you're in the Portland, Vancouver area, we might be able to do something in person. It's a little iffy right now with the COVID numbers. So we would have to set up some real safety um, elements involved in the party. It's not impossible, totally possible. Um, oh, is Carrie on here too and I missed it? All right. Um, anyway, so let me know. I'm all about the party. It's so much fun. This one was via Zoom. It ended up, I had planned for it to be about two hours and 15 minutes. It went three hours and 15 minutes only because, hi sis, only because um, they had special requests at the end and everybody that wanted to stay on stayed on. So like I said, let me know. Oh, and one other thing about during celebration, it's a spectacular time to join, uh, to join Stampin' Up! Because not only are you going to, excuse me, not only are you going to get the $125 worth of product for $99, but during celebration, they're offering you two stamp sets of your choice. And those run up to around $25. So that's an extra $50 worth of product. You get a free paper pumpkin, your, um, your starter kit, they call it kit, but it's you get to pick what all you're putting in that $125 worth of product. Uh, that order is free shipping. And so when you start to add all that up, it, I, and I did add it up, and it's over $100 worth of free. So a really good time to consider joining Stampin' Up! Some people are worried that if you join Stampin' Up! that means you need to sell. You don't. You can just be a hobby demonstrator. And I don't mean just um, if, if the discount is why you want to join because you get a 20% discount on your products, then that's an excellent reason to join. Um, I have a hobby demonstrator uh, team member and I love it. I absolutely love it. We get to, we exchange ideas with each other. Um, anyway, I'm looking to grow that community and if you're interested in number one, saving that money and number two, getting your supplies at a discount, please talk to me about the joining special. All right, enough about all of that. I bet you joined me to see what we're going to make today. And today we're going to make cards out of um, using the driving by stamp set, which is a free stamp set with um, with a qualifying $50 purchase. So I'm gonna turn my camera down so that you I can show it to you in the flyer. And you'll see the two cards that we're going to make today. Let's do it. Oh goodness. And Is that fuzzy? I hope that's not fuzzy. And are we secure? I think we are. And we're straight, I think, pretty much. 
All right, so this is the stamp set. It's got three images and three sentiments. I'm going to show you how to maybe even break apart some of the elements. So this is all one stamp. And I'm going to show you how to maybe just use the balloons or something like that. So that's that's the stamp set. Here it is on page seven of the celebration flyer. Again, everybody, I'm really sorry about my voice. It just has not recovered since I had that procedure on Friday. All right. <clears throat> so these are the two cards we're going to make today. This one is um, using the, the little van. And I put the sentiment on the outside on this one. This one might be a little bit harder for you to see. I also embossed the back of this one. And this one I put the sentiment on the inside. So I'm going to show you how to make both of those. This one is kind of fun. Let's see, I can put this aside. This is kind of fun because uh, these rainbows are made from the dies that come in the Rainbow of Happiness bundle. And there's this die piece here, and it cuts out four um, pieces of one paper at a time. And so I cut out four different papers and have just been moving the stripes around. I cut these. This really cute paper is also in the celebration flyer. And I should have already had it marked, but I didn't. It's called Sunshine and Rainbows, and it's a six by six, and there's 48 sheets of it, and I can't get enough of it. I've had so much fun, so you might have, I didn't finish showing you because the light didn't work, but the um, one of the projects that I made at the party this weekend was this one, which you'll notice is very similar to this one, but I bumped up the colors and used a different palette. Both of these papers are in this bundle of paper. So that's really fun. Then this background I also used here. This is the Hive. This is also in the new mini January through June catalog. And I'm using this for everything because this is like my favorite thing out of the entire catalog. Okay, so those are our elements. And also these dots are also new in the mini catalog, but I've custom colored mine. So let's get started. <clears throat> I really debated about whether or not I should cancel because I'm not getting my voice back yet, but I, I didn't want to miss out on my time with you all. So hopefully it's not too much of a distraction. So I've cut, I've pre-cut everything, but I haven't necessarily embossed and stuff like that. So here are my rainbow arcs. And like I mentioned, when you use that die, you, you would put one piece of paper, it's um, a three inch wide piece of paper, and you run it through your die cutting machine and you would get say, four of the granny apple green and then four of the gold and four of the magenta etc and then you break those apart and then you've got enough to make four different rainbows i'm focusing on granny apple green today <clears throat> because it's a happy happy cheerful color and it just rocks my little world all right so all of the dimensions for these um, pieces of cardstock will be on my blog later today, but I will do my best to give them to you as I go through as well. This is four and a quarter by 11 and scored at five and a half, and this will be a top fold card. Here we go. These two are going to go on the inside of the card like such, but I'll be stamping. I'll show you. Ta-da! Just like that. This one is going to go through an embosser and, to, and be raised up on the front. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to bring over my emboss machine. Now, we have two different embossing machines. 
we have the small and the large. I'm going to use the larger one this time because I'm using a larger embossing folder. We have several of the smaller embossing folders. I just happened to use the bigger one today and I have set it. I just showed it to you. So it's here somewhere. <laughs> That's, there it is. There it is. So I'm gonna line my paper up on the inside. And when I say line it up, I mean, I'm just not gonna, you know, do something like this because it does, um, on this particular card it shows there are other cards that I've done it crooked on purpose but this one I'm doing it straight straighter on purpose and that's not quite straight yet that's better all right let me get warmed up that was crazy when I went to turn on my camera this is the bin that hit the floor and everything went rolling and flying. So that was kind of a little crazy start. And look at that, just like that, we have a gorgeous background for our card. Now I could use either side. I'm gonna move my embossing machine aside and I'll bring it back for the other card. I could use either side. Either side is really dynamic and quite lovely. I'm using the more hollow looking side. And I'm going to go ahead and, oh, before I apply that to the front, I was about to apply it, but I forgot to adhere my rainbow. I'm going to apply my rainbow. Now you've heard me mention before, if you've watched me before, I like to use the Tombow glue. I like to have, it gives me enough time to wiggle my pieces into place before it adhere. It will adhere nice and hard, but it does give me a little bit of time to wiggle. And I, I'm starting with the smallest. You could, these are, as long as you're lining up the edges, the bottom and, the, and this upper edge, more than likely you would be able to get everything straight, but I'm starting at the bottom and going in. So you may have noticed on this card that you can actually see the bottom underneath the sentiment. So I'm wanting to make sure that I make a nice clean edge down here. This is looking curled because I ran it through the embossing folder, but when I use the the um, dimensionals to lay it down, it's going to flatten it out. So I'm not worried about that. I'm using our Stampin' Blends today for both of these projects. Now, I can feel that I exposed a little bit of adhesive over here on this side of the stripe. And I will, once it dries, I will show you how to remove it without damaging anything. And adhesive on the last rainbow stripe. We had seven people in that party this weekend. It was an awful lot of fun. It was a really great group and they were really interested in everything. We talked about like if they have problems with stamping or cleaning or stamping with children all kinds of stuff. All right, letting that, just giving that an extra minute to dry. Grabbing my dimensionals. Like I said, I was gonna use these to straighten, or to lift up the front of my card. 
off of my card base and it also will straighten it out. It's looking a little warped at the moment, but it won't. And I'm looking to see if I can actually see, yeah, I can just see a little bit of adhesive right here. And what I have is a, uh, what we call a rubber eraser. I bought these on, I bought a 12 pack of these um, because I like to have them available in my classes. Yeah. I bought these on Amazon and I'm not sure I'm looking in my camera to see. I know, Andy, I love that too. Um, not sure if you can see it or not, but there's a little bit of shine right here where the adhesive is showing. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna lay this down, but I'm gonna use this rubber eraser to pick that adhesive right up. Might have to, it might not be quite dry enough yet. Has anybody on here used the rubber eraser before? It's really great. Of course, I'm trying to do this on a texture too, right? All right. Well, might have had more glue there than I thought I did. It's almost off. There we go. All right. Set that aside, hope I don't need it again. Get my card base back out. Let's see, I'm gonna take a peek and see what comments we have so far. <laughs> you like the colors? I know, that the VW bus is adorable. I, you know, you said that about the hippie days and Andy, and I actually had thought about stamping some flowers on the side of it. I thought that would have been kind of fun. But I didn't this time. Maybe I'll do it next time. Yeah, if, it, if anyone is interested in having a party or if you've got a group of friends that would just be interested in the catalog and you don't want a party but you want to host us so that you can earn the rewards, let me know. We can work something out. Get the uh, catalog in your friend's hands. Get something worked out. All right. So we've got that adhered to the front. Now we're going to do a little bit of stamping and coloring and fussy cutting because there are no dies for this stamp set. I just re-inked my memento. So we should be good to go on this. And I've got the wrong automobile on here. So let's, this is for our next project. And I'll be honest, on the next project, I may go ahead and put the sentiment, oops, Put the sentiment on the outside instead of on the inside. Um, that wasn't my my favorite after I finished it. I love the colors in this one. <laughs> okay, see I've got some pretty decent coverage on here. I'm gonna try a little bit more. And I'm gonna fussy cut this so this doesn't matter if I'm straight or not. Got a good, got a good stamped image there. I'm going to wash this off using my chamois. Several of the people that were at that party this weekend were unfamiliar with our chamois. That it's, um, it's a, basically it's a sponge-like material that you get wet and that you can clean off your stamps with as you are are working on your projects. Oh, I might as well leave that on there because I'm going to use it again on the inside of my card and I might as well go ahead and stamp that right now before I forget. So I'm just going to use, so what I've done on the inside of this card is I just used the nose, the front of the van. I need a piece 
scrap cardstock to stamp off of, like such. There we go. Ta-da! Just like that. All right, close up my ink. I evidently am just a little um, not as coordinated as usual today. I've dropped a couple of things. Set that aside. I am going to <clears throat> sit while I do this coloring and while I do, I will raise my voice so that you can hear me a little better. <clears throat> and hopefully this voice will withstand that. <clears throat> All right, so I am using the blender pens, the Stampin' Blends, and I'm using Granny Apple Green. I'm using Basic Black. I'm using Smoky Slate. So the Granny Apple Green in the light version. So the duos come in a light and a dark and you use them for blending and shading. And you can, you can see that in my band here. So I'm gonna start by laying down my light Granny Apple Green. And that is going to, when I go in and put my dark on, it's giving it, instead of a, a dry paper, it's giving it some moist paper to hang on to. I don't even know how to describe it best, but I do know that if I put down the dark first that I don't get as good of coverage or as good of a blending effect. So I'm putting down my light first. I guess I should find out the scientific reason and be able to explain that better. So I've just laid down the light. Now I'm going to go back with the dark. And there's two tips on these pens. There's a bullet tip and there's a brush tip. I'm going to use the bullet tip. And any place that looks like the vehicle would be slightly rounded or maybe have a dark seam, like where two doors are joining together, or where there would be wheel, wheel wells, or fenders, I guess. So I'm putting in my darker color there. Then I'm gonna go back in with my lighter color, and it's going to blend that dark line in, but it'll leave that darker edge where I've put it. I'm gonna go ahead and put my front and back bumpers on. Coming back with my light, I'm using the brush tip because that's what I'm comfortable with. You can use either one. I'm using the smoky slate, the light smoky slate to shade the windows and the light smoky slate where there would be chrome on the wheels. Double checking light smoky slate and I'm going to use the bullet tip. I'm just going to come in here and just barely shade my windows. So yesterday I took a little bit of a break. I've been going nonstop for several days and like I mentioned earlier, I had a medical procedure on Friday and then the party on Saturday. Yesterday I took some a little bit of time off and I watched three back-to-back -back football movies. <laughs> Guess not. I love football movies. So I, I watched We Are Marshall, The Titans, and Blindside. Does anybody else like football movies? They make me happy. I'm using Dark Smoky Slate just on the little exhaust pipe here, and I'm just adding some dots there. And I've got light 
basic black for the tires and this is brand new pin and so I noticed earlier it really wants to spread so I'm going to try to do this with dots I don't know we'll see it's hard to color when I've got the image underneath the camera and I can't put my head right I'm getting better at it I've, I've had quite a bit of practice now and before I color the other tire, I'm gonna actually double check that I'm in the frame. I am, phew, that's good. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, right Andy? I, yeah, you're a football person. You had a, you had a kiddo, college football. Hi, Sonia. Yes, yeah, this is big time, big time sports house where I'm at. Not to mention that I work for a sports wear company. I work for Adidas. All right, <clears throat> going to, let's see, what else does my, I don't think it needs much of anything else. I think I am gonna go over it a little bit more with the blender pen because I've got a bit more of an edge where I used that dark granny apple green the edge is a little bit rough for me it doesn't look as blended as it should yeah there are scenes in each of those movies that just make me cry or give me shivers yesterday I basically sat on a Oh, I had a heating pad on my back and um, sweatshirts and yeah I, I was I was dressed all warm and cuddled and <laughs> and my husband cooked for me he was very sweet I am not sick I'm just had too much going on all right so this is the I'm color this little half of the van is the inside of our card. And I'll do some minor shading, not a ton. Go back over it again. What is your favorite? Do you have a favorite sports movie? I did not know until my husband and I got together that I love sports movies, like with a passion. I just hadn't been exposed to them before. And then once I was, well, well let's just say I own them all. All right, so I used the light smoky slate for tinting the windows and the chrome on the uh, hubcap. And then I'm going back to, I'm gonna make sure I grab the right one. This is light ba basic black and I'm using the bullet tip to color that tire. Now, if you're looking very closely at my coloring, you see I got some ink on one of the fenders here. I do have a color lifter pen that I will go back over that with to try to minimize that. Actually, I got it on this one too. And what it does is the alcohol actually pushes the ink depending on how you apply this it's pushing the ink um, in the direction that I'm drawing with my ink lifter. So it looks like it's magically just disappearing, but in fact, it's pushing the dye on the other side of that black line. 
magic. Okay. So now we know that this is going to be adhered like this. I'm going to go ahead and do that before I fussy cut the other. I'm just going to get this set up and yeah, my husband was all about the football games yesterday, wild card games. All right, can you see I've left a little perimeter around? So this outer mat card is four by five and a quarter. And then the next size down, the white card, is three and seven eighths by five and one eighth. I'm gonna flip it over and give it a nice pat down so that it dries flat. Flip it back over. There's gonna be the inside of our card. Now I need to fussy cut this. And this is a pretty generic shape. It's, I don't, it's not difficult at all. So I'm gonna go in and I'm just going to leave a little bit of a halo of the white, and it does not need to be perfect. I'm going to There we go. Sometimes I hold the scissors too hard, if that makes any sense, and they start creeping up past my joint. It's actually something I've done my entire life. I hold my pens, not maybe my blending pens, but like writing utensils. I, I hold the same way. I, I just hold everything really hard. All right, almost done here. So when you're fussy cutting, if you find that it's, it's difficult or it's frustrating, move. And now this is if you are right-handed. If you're left-handed, I'm not sure how to give you proper instruction. I'm sure that there's YouTube videos for it. But basically, you're moving this this piece with this your left hand you're cutting with your right hand you're basically not even moving your scissors you're leaving your scissors in basically one direction and you're moving everything else with your left hand and almost done there there's our band how cute is that little guy so cute. We're actually really close to done with this project. So I, for this card, I used a strip that was three quarters of an inch wide and I cut it um, by four, which was the dimension of this piece that I embossed. This was four by five and a quarter. So I've got this piece. I'm going to stamp my sentiment here and then I have a punch that I'm gonna to use to cut a point on the other side. And the sentiment that I use is driving by just to say hi. That looks a little messy. I'm going to do a stamp off here. I'm going to do a little test stamp. Yeah, see, my D and my R, my D and my J had more ink than the rest of it did. So I'm going to clean off my stamp and re-ink it. And hopefully that's straight. If it's not, I'll use the other. It's not. And I'm looking, let's see. Oh, a league of their own. Yep, Field of Dreams, Blindside, and Radio. Oh yeah, Radio. Sweet. Um, yesterday was quiet and restful at your house too. Yeah, oh, chilly, that would have been good too. We crock potted, um, we crock potted some 
John was, he was just really sweet. I had had such a rough day on Friday um, with my medical procedure and then the party on Saturday for my stamping up people that yesterday he crock potted pork chops for me, but they were like those big, beautiful sirloin chops. And then he made some, um, I don't know. I don't want to call them fried potatoes. They are fried potatoes, but he used those, you know, those tri-colored potatoes that you can get. He used those with a little bit of olive oil and some, just a little bit of garlic. It wasn't like super fancy or anything, but it was so yummy. And the broccoli yesterday, for some reason, tasted amazing. Okay. So I am going to use dimensionals to raise this, this strip. I The reason I, I wanted this point on here is because I wanted it to obviously look like this was the front of the van. I. I think that some people might actually get confused about that if they didn't stare at it for just a second and see where that front windshield was. I am going to close up my ink. So is everybody seeing the same things that we are regarding um, short staffed like hospitals and such? I had a procedure on one that I've waited for since August, a procedure on um, Friday. And when I checked in the at registration, the they told me that the hospital was at 100% capacity and their workforce was 35% of their workforce was out sick. And then when they went to do my procedure, one of the monitors had a malfunction and they had actually put me under um, anesthesia already. They had to bring me out and while they replaced the machine, then they, when they replaced the machine, that machine also had a malfunction. The people that could reset those machines were out sick. So that's why I was asking the question was, um, and I, I was able to get my procedure taken care of, test taken care of, but uh, it, man, it's just really stretched everywhere right now with so many people missing work, being sick, and the people that are left at work trying to make it through without maybe the whole team that they need. Oh, my heart goes out to everybody. All right, so what I did just now is I because I'm layering my van, the wheels are next to the sentiment, but the top end is over here. And I used a layer of dimensionals here to raise it up. And I, so I've got one layer of dimensionals on the wheels, but two layers of dimensionals on the top of the van so that my van is straight. And I saw Andy wrote something. I'm going to look. So there we go, there's our van, that cutie patootie van. I'm gonna go ahead and adhere this. Let's see what Andy had to say. Ooh, we've got some new viewers on here too. Nice to see you, everybody. Uh, future daughter-in-law works in an ER. Ooh. That only six. Oh, wow, wow, yeah, it's just, it's such a difficult situation right now. So difficult. And like I said, I mean, I got, I actually got injured in July. My situation escalated in August and we've been waiting for me to be able to have these tests. And I've just had to be patient, I couldn't be couldn't be grumpy about it, <laughs> but I'll be glad when I'm past this situation. All right, so the only thing that's missing now are these little three dots, and I wanna tell you how I made those. So we've got these classic matte dots that come in white, off-white, gray, and black. 
that come in the, um, the new January through June mini catalog. And I actually custom color them to what I want. Let's see here. I'm going to use the dark granny apple green. And I'm going to go ahead and use it on the off-white. I don't use that many off-white um, gems, so I'm, I don't feel bad about changing their color. Now, you may see, I want to make sure that I um, clarify a situation here. You may see that I have a frayed tip on my granny apple green. This is not standard. This is not something that normally happens. I abused this pen and I used it on glitter paper and it did rough it up. It did fray the end. Let's see. So this is what the tip should look like under normal circumstances and this is what it looks like because I used it on a glitter paper. So I'm just trying to get by with it until I use it up and can replace it. It's full of ink. So I don't want anyone to think that uh, the Stampin' Up! blender pens fall apart. They don't. I abused this pen. Okay, going to let that dry for a second. God bless everybody that's a nurse or works in a hospital right now. They actually... <laughs> they actually... Um, gave me the option of canceling my procedure or proceeding and I asked really kindly if they would give me a minute to pray about it and they did they they were so sweet they were so so kind they just stood back and they let me say a prayer and get the answer that I needed about whether or not I should go forward with the equipment as as it was on that day And it wasn't like a full-on malfunction. It was there. It was a redundant gauge, so it wasn't like I was taking a big chance. But it was enough of a chance that I had to decide whether or not to proceed or cancel the procedure I had waited for since August. Okay, so what do you think? Do you like this card? I love the little van. So that's project number one. Gonna set this aside. Let's see, I don't need this anymore, this anymore. Clean up my space. Let's see, so we've got football going on. We've got basketball starting. What else do we have going on right now? I don't need this anymore. That. Oh, I'm so glad that you like it, Andy. Yeah, and I think you ordered this paper in your, what you've got coming, right? Um, I saw that you received part of your order and I believe the rest of your order is, is arriving tomorrow. Nick is started. Oh, sweet. Baseball. I oh, mean, I think John just got through telling me that there might be a strike, which just blows my mind. Um, but life goes on, right? Okay, our next project, let's see, I'll set these aside for a minute and get out my other project. So we made this cute little, looks like a little Corvette or Miata or something like that. Math teacher and a high school. That is so awesome. That is so awesome. Um, I think on this card that I'm gonna make uh, during this demonstration, I'm gonna move my sentiment to the outside because this kind of bothered me. I don't know, maybe I just need to add some gems or something. I could do that too. But, so this is the card we're going to make. And we have all kinds of pieces. And I'm not sure, I wanna bring this up. Can you see the brick and mortar that I've used back here? This is an embossing folder. Oh, you know what? A bow right here would look kind of flowy too. I could do that. So here's what the brick and mortar embossing folder looks like. It's a 3D embossing folder. And it's actually one of my newer embossing folders. I like it a lot. I'm gonna put away my extra stamp. As you, if you've watched me before, you know I don't like to stamp in a messy area. That's just me. 
Okay, get on all my little bits and pieces out. And that silly ribbon that went on a uh, journey right before I started this camera, that was fun. Okay, so I guess I might as well go ahead and emboss my the front of my card and then get that moved out of the way. So bringing back in the big cut and emboss machine, I'm using plate number one, putting my paper in my embossing folder and making sure, because this is directional, you see that? So I wanna make sure that the bricks are going the direction that I want them to on the card. In this case, I do want them to go side to side because this is a side fold card. The folded end of the folder goes in first. Here we go. Yeah, have you used it yet? Have you used the new mini die cutter? I love my mini die cutter. Look at that, isn't that gorgeous? So, I just love that beautiful texture that that gives us. I can see myself using that for a lot of things. All right, setting that aside. So I've got, this card is a side fold. The other one was a top fold. Again, with the 11 by four and a quarter, scored at five and a half. Matching up my edges and going to use my bone folder to burnish my fold. There we go. That's pretty straight. Going to go ahead and I'm going to put dimensionals on the back of this because I'm going to be using a ribbon. Dimensionals right here. I'm using the bigger dimensionals instead of the little ones. And I'm just doing, I know you saw me do a, a double layer of dimensionals on that other card. I'm using a single layer of dimensionals on this one. Oh, I just took that off, but I haven't put my ribbon on yet. I almost made a mistake. So I'm going to, so I, a lot people do this a lot of different ways. You're not going to be wrong in whichever way you decide to do it. I like to measure out approximately how much I'm gonna need that's gonna be exposed and then how much will wrap around to the back. And then sometimes I use tear and tape, sometimes I use scotch tape. Today I see the scotch tape laying within arm's reach, so that's what I'm going to use. And I'm just using scotch tape on the back. So, uh, right about Little, I'm looking at my space here. It was a little over an inch, but close to an inch and a quarter. So I'm going to just throw my tape there, bring this across. And because this is the type of design that it is, I can actually see whether or not I'm straight by following the design. There. So I'm my base ribbon is on, and now I can put a separate bow on there. Now, I can go ahead and take off those dimensional backs. I would have found a way to make it work. Would have found another way to use the red ribbon. Oh, this red ribbon, um, this is new in the January through June mini catalog, and they call it a they call it faux linen ribbon and it's in real red and it is so soft. It's, it ties a really lovely bow, which I think you're gonna see me do and apply right here. Okay, I am eyeballing this for straightness. Not yet, hoping to use it tomorrow evening. Okay, cool. Yes, I saw that the rest of your order, if it's for some, they shipped at the same time. I don't know why they're coming at two different times, but they are. Okay, so I told you I was going to show you how to, let's see, I'm gonna change 
vehicles on my block. I told you I was going to show you how to use just the, say, break apart part of the elements in the stamp. So here's the sports car. So first I'm going to stamp the piece that's going to go on the front and then I'm going to go ahead and stamp the, the balloons that will go on the inside. dimensional backs out of the way. There we go. You know, another thing uh, to consider during celebration is if you don't know where to start or if you don't have a lot of supplies, sometimes getting the kit is a really good way to go. Get one up. We have several all-inclusive kits. And those actually count towards celebration as well, getting celebration um, freebies as well. Okay, I'm, I'm centering from the, the top balloon to the front bumper, bumper. Just kinda centering my stamp on my paper here. Pretty good, pretty good. I'm gonna wash this off now and I'm gonna show you how to do just the balloons. I am going to put away this ink and I'm going to pull out my stamp and write marker. And there's a brush tip and there's a bullet tip. And I'm gonna use the brush tip to ink up just the strings and the balloons like this. And if it looks like it's drying, you're right, it is, but that's okay. I'm gonna tell you how to reactivate it. I'm actually gonna huff on it. Have you ever heard that before? So I am, there we go. So now I've got ink on the strings and on the balloons. And then I'm going to bring it up in front of my mouth and huff hot air on it. <sighs> Just like that. And then I'm going to come over and stamp my balloons down in one corner. Just like that. Cool? Isn't that kind of fun? And then you just clean that off the same way as you do the regular ink using the chamois. And now I'm ready to color these two images. Now I'm again using the Stampin' Blends. I am using real red, the real red ribbon, and I'm, so I'm gonna use the real red on the car, but the balloons I'm using are three different colors of red. I'm using light cherry cobbler, light poppy parade, and light real red. So I am going to sit down again while I do this coloring because I'm a little bit more accurate when I do it that way. So again, with the windshield, let's see, where do I want to start? I might as well just go ahead and finish these balloons and set them out of the way. So I've got the light poppy parade, and I'm just using the bullet tip. And if I leave a little bit of white, that's okay because there would be some shine anyway, right? Then I'm using, that's dark. This looks pink, but the, um, the caps look pink, but the names on here are light and dark real red. So I just didn't want matchy matchy, but I wanted them to kind of go together. And I think this is light cherry cobbler. And again, I'm using the bullet tip. And then I can come back. So those are my lights. And I could add just a, just a little shade 
one spot of shading. And I'm going to be done with that. Well, I said be done, but I'm actually going to go back over it with the lights again to do that blending. There we go. So Andy, are you at work or do you have today off? Andy Sage. <coughs> I just realized I had two Andys on here. Okay. And I'm gonna stand up and take a quick look. Hi, Barb. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, you are at work, okay. Shall we have a phone call after you get home? Or do you wanna wait until tomorrow? I'm good either way. Okay, I am going to use the Light Smoky Slate, making sure that I, yep, Light Smoky Slate. I'm using the bullet tip to color that windshield. And then I'm coloring just the inner ring. So on the van, I colored the second ring too, but on this one, I'm using, leaving a white ring for some sporty tires. And then I'm using this for the chrome on the front and back bumper and the headlight. There we go. Oops. Then I'm going to use, so I used real red here because I want it to tie back to my ribbon. My husband's at work today, but my regular day job, he has a day off today. All right, throwing in. So Barb, which, which tip did I give you? I would love to know what I actually taught somebody. <laughs> Oh my gosh, yeah, you know, there's, I say that because so many people, it feels like so many of the people that um, I'm blessed to participate in stamping with are actually way more experienced than I am. Let's see. And go back over that one more time with the light, real red. But these are small spaces, so they don't take that long to color. Just a little bit of pre-planning about where you want your shade to be. Now, I don't have to use the same color to do the shading. I could have used a gray, and that works really well as, um, as well but I didn't in this particular case. Okay, so oops, wrong color. Looking for my light basic black for coloring my tires. And I'm gonna use the bullet tip. I mentioned this earlier, but in case you missed it, I will be posting this video, it gets converted over to a YouTube video. I'll be posting this video and the cutting instructions on my blog. I always throw that blog link over on my Facebook page, but in case you were looking for it, you can always find it over at Tia Woodward at blogspot.com. Coloring in my balloons. I almost did a turquoise ish colored Corvette earlier or today, but I didn't have blending pens that I felt coordinated well enough. I guess maybe the Poppy Parade would have been okay, but I don't know. I started to overthink it. 
So then I ended up with a black-red combo, which is good. Uh-oh, I went right outside that line, but I'm not too worried about it because I've got my handy-dandy color lifter here. And I'm just gonna push to apply enough. I'm starting to feel a little dry. There we go. Um, let's see, I'm gonna stand again and take a look at comments. How to break apart a stamp, oh yeah, yeah, good. Okay, thank you, Andy. I appreciate you understanding. <laughs> yeah, my voice is, is rather trash. It's kind of disturbing that it's taking this long to come back. <clears throat> they told me there wasn't any problems when they put the tube down my throat, but when I woke up, I knew immediately something wasn't exactly as I was expecting it to be. All right. So, we're all colored. Now we're going to apply this colored image. We're going to adhere it. We're going to mat it on black, and then we're going to mat it on red. All these blender pens off to one side, get them out of my space. <laughs> they take up a lot of space sometimes. And here's my adhesive. If you have children and you want to know what that what might be a good way for them to be able to craft along with you, let me know. I did a little bit of research and I have some good ideas that can be um, cost-effective and be satisfying for both children and parents. Um, and I've got some cleanup instructions that I can give you as well to make the whole process a little easier. I can also tell you what is the most, I just said that, most cost-effective. It looks like my red is trying to bleed back out, so I'm going to come back in with my color lifter again and push it back little bit and I might have put too much down and that and it's floating back out into that cloud but if I have to I can put a gem or something over the top of it now I'm going to adhere this whoops I'm gonna stand back up because there we go now I can see everything better Yeah, I'm just getting to learn how to use those stamp and write markers, um, how to really maximize the best way to use them. Or one of the ways to use them. I shouldn't say the best way because any way that you can use them is makes them a good tool, right? Okay, so there's the front. I'm gonna put this on, let's see. Now before I put this down, this is when I need to make a decision. I can either keep my so on this card, I have my sentiment on the inside. It just says, you've got style. I could. Okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to use my bow maker. I'm going to set this one aside, and I'm going to put a bow on this, and I'm going to see if that makes this. It may, oh, 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 and I've got some other thoughts, too. Okay, y'all are coming along on an experiment with me. So... I'm going to make a slightly bigger bow. Let's see, is that too big? Yeah, it's too big. I'm gonna go smaller. All right, I'm gonna make a bow. So this is a, in case you haven't seen this before, this is a bow maker. Uh, I actually don't need one in order to tie a bow, but when I'm on camera, sometimes it just makes it a little faster and easier. My friend, Ron, uses his 3D printer to make these uh, over in the Kennewick area, and I sell them for him. So if you are interested in something like this, please let me know, and 
I can get you set up. Um, I think we're going to, that's funny. This, the knot turned out funny on this one. I'm not sure why. Um, I think we're going to sell them for $10 a piece, but that includes shipping. Let's see. So if I put this bow here so that it looks like it's kind of coming off the back end of that, I could put it here. Nope. I want to put it here. That actually adds quite a bit. Okay. So I'm going to do two things. I wish I would have thought of this sooner, but I didn't. So thank you for playing with me. I'm going to retie this bow because I don't like how that one tied. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a post-it note and I'm going to cover this colored image. And then I'm going to take my stamp and write marker. I'm going to let's see. I need to make myself make sure I've got myself everything far enough away. I'm not going to make a huge mess. And I grab a spare piece of paper from my printer, put this underneath, and I'm going to do a splatter technique and give this wall a little bit more dimension. So I'm using the brush end. I could either use my blending brushes or I could use my stamp, stamp and write marker. I'm going to use my stamp and write marker and I'm going to flick my brush so that it spatters on my wall. So I'm just going to do, and I don't need to do a lot. Is it doing it? Should be doing it. I'm not seeing anything. Okay, well then I'm gonna switch over to my blender pen and make sure that I grab the dark basic black and I'm gonna do it with that. There we go, that's what I was looking for. And now I don't have control, so I kinda have to be okay with however it turns out. All right, and then I just made a little bit of a mess on here, so I'm gonna use my chamois to clean up the outside of my cap. All right, so now that I know that, when I do the other card, that'll be easier. Okay, I'm gonna take this off, like such, and I'm gonna retie that bow because I'm not sure how I messed that up, but I did. <laughs> it is, yes. And I've done it with lots of different colors, Andy. It, um, it can really look nice. Okay, there we go. Let's try this one more time. So this comes under, this comes through, this comes around, and just like that. Tie my knot nice and tight. There we go, now there's a pretty bow. And I'm going to use a mini glue dot, which I'm pretty sure I haven't gotten out yet, so. There we go, because I hadn't planned on it. Mini glue. Okay, I suddenly am feeling a lot better about this card. And I'm leaving fairly long tails because I like the idea of something blowing out the back, kind of like the balloons we see. And then I think I'm go also going to add, remember those dots that I just was using in this other project, how they had some black ones? I think I'm gonna go ahead and throw a few black ones on here. I'm gonna use my take my pick tool. I'm using the clay end to pick up my gems with. Let's see. Okay. Mm, not sure I like that. Mm. 
not a good time to be indecisive. <clears throat> you're watching me create as I go. All right. Normally those stick right to the... I'm going to go ahead and throw that in the middle of that, that heavier spatter area. Make sure I've got my... Yep, I've got it out. Where do I want to put my third one? Let's see. I don't know. I'm thinking too hard on this. See, I'm no different than any of the rest of you. <laughs> and now it's stuck to my clay. Let's try that one more time. I think I'm going to deserve a nice cup of tea. What do you think? I'm just drinking hot water now, trying to um, keep this throat soothed. There we go. All right. And on the inside, it says you've got style. I'm actually much happier with that now. I think it's a much more dynamic looking card. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do my spatters now, not after the fact. So I'm using the brush tip. I'm using the inside of the cap and I'm just flicking it. See that? That was one flick, two flick, Three, four, five, maybe a little bit more right here, and there. Just kind of gives it a, I don't know, a little bit more of a textured look. Setting that back off to one side. All right, so now where did I put my, there it is. So there's my image. I could center it, I can put it off to one side like I did on this one. I feel like I'm missing something. Oh, there it is, okay. So I'm gonna put dimensionals on the back of this. We're actually very close to, to finished. And now when I spattered this one, I got some black on the ribbon too, and I actually kind of like it. So, Andy, do you still have snow? Um, the lady that had the party on Saturday, she was from Oklahoma. Osawa, I think how you say it and they had gotten snow that day my friends in the tri-cities I think the snow is gone isn't it I'm gonna I haven't stamped the sentiment yet because now I've decided to keep the sentiment on the inside you okay we'll get you set up with one of these bow tools it's actually, and this is not to sway you in any way whatsoever, but it is the, the gift that I give people when they join my um, Stampin' Up! team. Let's see. And you've got style. That's fairly straight. Close that to one side. Wash this off. Okay. We are down to mounting this on the red. What do you think of this red and black look? Do you like it? I think I, I, I like it a lot. I think it's a little bit more classic looking. I was, I mentioned earlier, I was going to use like a turquoise. And I just didn't have, I was too indecisive about what color of ink I would use on the car. There we go. Da, da, da. Let's go ahead and adhere that to the inside. Now I'm trying to remember. I'm going to have to look in the catalog if you can buy those 
Stampin' Right markers individually, or can you only buy them in a set? I know you can buy the black individually. The blender pens you can buy in the duo packs. There we go, there's that. We just need a bow and some black dots, and we are finished with project number two. Yeah, I mentioned that John made those pork chops yesterday. They're actually a little bit more of a, like a sirloin steak, kind of, that thicker, anyway, super wonderful, wonderful meat. And I'm gonna use the leftovers from that today to make some enchiladas. Oh, a little bit of lime cilantro rice, a little bit of refried beans. Turn in that yesterday's yummy dinner into the next one. Mini glue dot. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I asked if you had snow. My, uh, the lady that was the hostess for the party on Saturday, she lives in Oklahoma and they had snow. Just wondering how affected you were by that storm that came through. Okay. And there we go. throw some black dots on here. Does anybody have any, you got a dusting on Saturday? Oh, but didn't stay long, okay. Yeah, they were, I think they're like an hour, hour and a half from you in Os Osawa, I think. And uh, I think they maybe got a little bit more than that. And it had been like 70 degrees earlier in the week or something like that, <laughs> some craziness. Does anyone have any questions? Does anybody need a catalog or want to have a party? All right, here we go. I'll clean up this mess a little bit so that you can actually see the projects now. So we finished two of the sports car and we finished two of the van. Well, I, yeah, we didn't finish two. I made one of each. There. What do you think? Do you like that project? So this is the driving by stamp set. There's no dies. Um, this is a celebration item that you can get for free with a qualifying purchase of $50 or more. And uh, yeah, there's six stamps in here. They're red rubber. The bow maker would help out your fingers. Yeah. Yes, I can get you set up. Or you can contact Kathy. Kathy's husband is who makes them for me. Do you know Kathy, Barb? Um, yeah, I'm glad that you like them. And again, with one of our free stamp sets. And you know, I there were several different things I thought about using. We have some dies that cut out trees and we've got embossing folders that look like forests and things like that. It'd be really easy to put something like that on the back and then stamp and then cut. Uh, so there's lots of different possibilities with these. I've seen where some demonstrators are actually talking about cutting out uh, or cutting their stamps apart so that the balloons are separate from the car. I don't think that's necessary, but that might be what somebody wants to do. And if it's a stamp set you're getting for free, then it's no harm, no foul. Um, yeah. So, Kathy Hartley on our team. Her husband is who makes them for me. But I, I could gladly get you hooked up too, either way, if you decide that you want one. They're really handy. They 
um, I've used the really wide, you know, like that um, metallic mesh ribbon, all the way down to super skinny uh, baker's twine with this. It's just super easy. All right, well, everybody, thank you so much for joining me today. I will be posting the instructions and the color names and all of that in my blog, and I will post the link of my blog to Facebook. Thank you for joining me today. Everybody, please stay healthy and be well, be safe. My love to you all. Big, big hugs.